think is going to help identify and you know couple those two different sections of your workshop together. All right, so we need to start working through the actual bulk part of this content creation. If you're unaware or you haven't been following my recent videos, I did design out you know one of the main screens, which is your dashboard, and what I want some of those things to look like. But truthfully, I didn't design any of the other screens yet. And I think I could smash my way through code trying to ideate and work through these things all at one time. But I think it's gonna be way more efficient if I just sit down with some pen and paper and start drawing some of this out. And the reason I think that's so important is one, it's just gonna reduce the churn when I actually start writing the code for these screens. And maybe even more importantly, it's going to allow me to start thinking through the data structures and getting all of the roadmap and to-do tasks down. So I have survey feedback. I know some of the big broad stroke type things that people are most interested in. So I'm gonna catalog all of those things into actual concrete tasks and, and that should help expose what this MVP should actually be. And interestingly enough, like I think some people get caught up in the fact of like taking action and building this MVP. And I'd actually encourage you to take a pause. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! Think through the problem and then start building. The very next step that I wanna do is hook up the database. And I know I've said I'm gonna do a local first approach, but previously I was leaning towards Watermelon DB. And after consulting with a couple of friends of mine, I'm actually going another direction. I'm going to be using Realm and MongoDB and then probably S3 or Superbase for the storage of any pictures. So yeah, so we're gonna sit down here probably for the next hour, put on some Pomodoro sessions and try to ideate and draw through some of the screens, documents that I will need to start storing. So that way we can start designing this database. Okay, so I'm sitting here working through some of the designs here, just have paper and pencil and uh, working through some of the designs for the workshop screen. And I kind of just want to walk you through this and kind of, you know, get these notes out of my head, both for y'all to kind of get a better, deeper understanding of my thought process with this, but also for me to just talk it out loud and help organize my thoughts. So the workshop screen, as I mentioned before, contains three different sections. You have your projects, your inventory, and your events. And I think this is super critical for this application because one of the huge proponents is when you're planning projects or you're planning many projects, it's really nice when you know exactly the amount of inventory or resources or whatever that you need to complete that project. And having those two side by side, I think is going to help identify and you know couple those two different sections of your workshop together. And this is what's going to allow you to very easily and quickly see, oh, I have six ongoing projects. If I schedule in a to-do of another project, I know I need this amount of inventory. And ideally, we'll get some kind of warning or some kind of visual aid to show you, hey, you're running out of inventory or you're or you are out of inventory and you need to go shopping. So I think having those two kind of in the same plane of view is gonna be super helpful for the user to identify and work through their different project states. So the project section is gonna be your standard Kanban type board, your to do, your in progress, you're done. Maybe a few other columns will show up or a couple of filters, whether it be a range filter for you know week, month, day, year. Obviously, if it's 2024, I shouldn't see all of my projects from 2023 that are done. So I'll have to work through that and let you very easily identify kind of the range of what you care about. Maybe I allow you to filter for only a specific column, you know, all of those types of things. Think like Notion style Kanban boards. And I think that's kind of the route I want to go here. And then your inventory section, I'm still working on this design. If you haven't seen dribble.com, it's three B's in the word dribble. It is great because you can just type in things like inventory manager, mobile, and get some really good inspiration and designs and just help ideate what it should look and feel like. And then the last section will be probably a calendar type widget, uh, but that's your events. So that's your craft fairs, your maintenance reminders. Maybe you have 
some of your leads or sales meetings, um, if you're meeting with your clients, kind of plugged in there so you have all of those things at a broad scope level, but then can very easily look them up of what's kind of coming up via your dashboard. So that's where we're at. We are just now doing paper and pencil. I needed to take a step away from the code. One, it's been a long week. My brain is quite literally a little mushy. <laughs> and then two, I could scribble here, do pencil, do pen, whatever, highlight. Uh, you can see I have a ton of scribbles on this side, but I can work through this very rapidly without writing a single line of code. And I can take this into Figma, make it look pretty, make sure I like the colors and all those things. And then I can take it to code to make sure I'm actually headed the right direction without having to do a bunch of rework because I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what it should look like. I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. I've said it before and I'll take this one to the grave. Start with the crawl and level yourself up the ladder. If I, I, I could have just gone directly to code and I guarantee you that I would have spent far more time trying to do it that way than I would just getting down to paper and pencil um, and, and just going to work. So I have this like little analog desk is what I call it. Uh, it's just a, a plain desk that I put in front of my window. Um, I have a little Bluetooth speaker that I kick on here. I have some PlayStation controllers, but don't tell anybody. Uh, little book. This is a good book. I like this book. And I think Noah's a cool guy. I think some of y'all, uh, especially my, my crew out on threads, Noah's a cool guy. This is a good book so far. I really like the coffee challenge. Uh, if you don't know what the coffee challenge is, go look it up. It's pretty cool. It's definitely, definitely something that gives people the heebie jeebies, but I think it's really good to get them out of their shell. Anyways, I love this little analog desk. It gets away from the screens. Sometimes I'll whip out my phone and go to dribble.com if I need inspiration, but I just have a bunch of plain printer paper, a notebook, and I just start designing. So that's what we're doing probably for the remainder of today. We got a little bit of code done and I realized, like I said, I just needed to take a step back, stop spinning my wheels on the computer and just go back to the basics and start figuring out what it actually should look and feel like. So with that said, that is the end of this video and I will see you all next week. Peace.